Shalom. You know, context, context is everything. Um, context gives us the gives us the full picture of of a scenario for a full picture of of scripture a a full uh, understanding of of what someone is trying to relate uh, often we take st things out of context uh, because we don't understand the context uh, many disagreements have happened because uh, folk take take things out of context uh, they don't understand the context of what it is uh, someone is trying to relay. Uh, it could be a very close relationship, someone uh, that someone has known for years, years of their life, but because they have taken something out of context with what they said, uh, not having an understanding of the context of what they're saying, um, a misunderstanding is developed. And, and oftentimes a uh, fruitful, long friendship is ended over a lack of context, over a lack of understanding. You take that same understanding and, we, and when we apply it to scripture, there are uh, entire religions, entire movements and, and denominations that uh, have been erected over a lack of context not understanding the context of a thing and you know there's multiple reasons for that but i think primarily is because uh, a lot of us won't read we won't read the context what we'll do is we'll we'll take a a sound bite here a sound bite there a scripture here and a scripture there and we'll formulate an opinion based on incomplete data without reading the entire scripture in context. Um, you take, for instance, uh, Yahusha's words in that in the fifth chapter of Matthew. And these are these are words from his very own mouth. Where he declares that he did not come to destroy or abolish the law or the prophets. He didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill. He goes on to say, so that anyone who, um, rather, uh, let's back up a little bit. He says, uh, the Shamayim and the arrest will pass away. Not one jot a tittle will pass away from the Torah until all has been fulfilled. He goes on to say that so that anyone who teaches others the Torah, who does the Torah and then teaches others to, to do the Torah, to obey the Torah, uh, they would be called great in the kingdom of the Shamayim. And those who do not obey Torah, and I'm paraphrasing, and teach others not to obey Torah, they will be called least in the Shamayim. And so these are words from the Mashiach's very own mouth. Yet, most of us will take words from a false teacher that has taken scripture out of context over the words of the Mashiach. We'll listen to a false teacher that says that, you know, we're not under the law, that you don't have to obey the law and totally contradict the words of the Mashiach. Another passage of scripture that's had that has been taken out of context is that, you know, there are some who say, well, there are a lot of folks who say, as a matter of fact, who say that we can now eat anything. That Yahusha has declared all things clean. That uh, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out of the stomach or the mouth that defiles a man. And so, by not reading that passage in context, a whole false false doctrine has been formulated. 
And multitudes upon multitudes upon multitudes are defiling themselves with abominable things and are on a pathway to destruction. And so I, I want to I want to entitle this video um, context is everything. Um, can we eat anything? Is it OK for us to eat anything? Let's read that scripture in context that I mentioned. If you have your scriptures, um, go ahead and pause this video, run and get your scriptures. Um, and come back and let's sit down and uh, let's have a uh, let's have a, a first day brunch together, and uh, let's gain some some understanding of what the Mashiach is the Mashiach is actually saying in this passage of scripture. Let's read it in context. Is it actually okay for us to eat anything? Let's read. The 15th chapter of Matif Yahu, commonly called Matthew. Uh, let's start at verse 1 and then we'll read down to verse 20 uh, in context. Then there came to Yahusha scribes and Pharisees from Yerushalayim, saying, Why do your taught ones transgress the traditions of the elders? We could stop right there. <laughs> We, we could actually end this video right there uh, with verse number two, with that question. Why do your taught ones transgress the tradition, the operative word is tradition, of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. Verse three. But he answering said to them, why do you also transgress the command of Elohim because of your tradition. For Elohim has commanded, saying, Respect your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received me from me has been dedicated. Verse 6. Is certainly released from respecting his father or mother. So you have nullified the command of Elohim by your tradition. Hypocrites. Yasha Yahu rightly Navua about you saying, This people draw near to me with their mouth and respect me with their lips, but their heart as far from me but in vain do they worship me teaching as teachings the commands of men and calling the crowd near he said to them hear and understand and here's that out of context thing people will start right here without reading the entire context of the scripture but here we go verse 11 not that which goes into the mouth defiles the man, but that which comes out of the mouth. This defiles the man. Then his taught ones came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees stumbled when they heard this word? But he answering said, Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be uprooted. Leave them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both shall fall into a ditch. And Kepha answering said to him, explain this parable to us. And Yahusha said, are you still without understanding? Do you not understand that whatever enters into the mouth goes into the stomach and is cast out in the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And these defile the man. For out of the heart come forth wicked reasonings, murders, adulteries, whorings, thefts, false witnesses, slanders. 
Here's the verse that drives this whole thing into context, that drives the point home. This is what Yahusha is talking about. Here's the verse, verse 20. These defile the man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile the man. Again, context, context, context is everything. Most of you don't even understand that Yahusha never, ever, ever, ever spoke against Turah. He never spoke against Turah. How can he speak against Turah when he is the living Turah? To speak against Turah is to speak against himself. He never spoke against Turah. He never contended with the religious leaders with anything with respect to Turah. He contended with them over their traditions, over the commandments and the doctrines of men, over their Talmud. Most of you don't even understand that in their Talmud, in uh, their traditions, that there is a tradition with respect to the washing of the hands. And that if one does not wash his hands prior to eating, then, then, then that makes what he's eating unclean. This is, the, this is the tradition that Yahushua is dealing with, not the commandments of Yah. He never deals with the commandments of Yah. In other words, he never speaks against the commandments of Yah. He always speaks against tradition, religion, the commandments of men. Now, I read a scripture. Well, I didn't read it. I, I kind of paraphrased it at the beginning. And that is that he did not come to abolish Turah. He came to fulfill. Fulfill what? He came to fulfill what was written about him, himself, in the Turah, in the writings, in the, in the Ketubim, and in the Nabiim. He came to fulfill what was written about him. He didn't come to abolish or destroy it. Not one jot or one tittle will be, uh, will, 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 will go away from the Torah until all has been fulfilled. All has not been fulfilled. Heaven and earth still stands. The new reign has not been erected. The new Jerusalem has not come down. All has not been fulfilled. And so we see by reading this thing in context, he's not talking about food at all. He's talking about the, the tradition of the washing of the hands and how the religious Pharisees and Sadducees believed that if one did not wash his hands, then that would defile that which he was eating. It would uh, make it unclean. He always dealt with tradition. He always spoke against tradition. He never spoke against the instructions of the most high he still speaks against tradition he still hates tradition he still hates the doctrines and the commandments of men he still hates the worship of the sun when most people uh, will go uh, to the house of Tammuz and worship the sun on the day of the sun on the first day of the week he still hates when People will uh, worship Ishtar, uh, a fertility goddess, and call it Resurrection Sunday. He still hates when people will celebrate the birthday of Nimrod, the first day of the unconquered sun, the, the, the birthday of Mithraserapus, what they call Christmas. He still hates the traditions of men, and he still calls it strange fire he still calls it strange fire you cannot eat anything you cannot just eat what you want to eat in fact most people don't even understand what the definition of food is what is food what is food now based on your own definition and this, that's what religion is Based on your own, 
based on your own definitions, based on what you consider right and what you consider wrong. And, in, and which is most time in direct opposition to what y'all considers right and what y'all considers wrong. Food is whatever y'all tells us what food is. You don't get to decide what food is. You don't get to decide what right is. You don't get to decide what wrong is. Only he is a deck. Only he is righteous. And only he can determine what right is what wrong is, and only he can decide or determine what food is, what is proper for us to eat. And so again, I reemphasize, he was not talking about food in this passage at all. He's talking about the washing of the hands, the tradition of the washing of the hands. Many of you have not taken heed to Esau, the brother of Jacob. Many of you have a lot in common with Esau. In fact, many of you are carrying the Ruach, the spirit of Esau. How so, you ask? Esau sold his birthright for food. Every time you put a catfish in your mouth, a pork chop sandwich, shrimp, a lobster, or a rabbit or a raccoon or a rattlesnake or an alligator. Every time you put that which is unclean in your mouth, you are essentially selling your birthright over food. Over food. Because you are transgressing the commandments of Yah for your belly. For your belly. Now, I got a word for you today. It is written that Edom is going to be destroyed. That Edomites are going to be destroyed. And so if you are behaving as an Edomite, if you are be behaving as Edom, if you are selling your birthright over a pork chop sandwich, over shrimp cocktail, cocktail, over lobster bisque, then you are going to be destroyed. These are not my words. You don't believe me? Get your scriptures, get your scriptures, turn to Yasha Yahu, commonly called Isaiah, turn to chapter 66 and we'll read from verses 15 through 17. Read it. Let's read it. For look, Yahuwah comes with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his displeasure with burning and his rebuke with flames of fire for by fire and by his sword Yahuwah shall judge all flesh and the slain of Yahuwah shall be many those who set themselves apart and cleanse themselves at the gardens after one in the mist eating flesh of pigs and the abomination and the mouse are snatched away together, declares Yahuwah. So many of you that can't let go of your baby back ribs, that are still eating the abomination, the catfish and the shrimp, the lobster, the oyster, the rabbit or the hare, the raccoon, the possum, the snake, all kinds of disgusting bugs and alligators. Those of you who can't let this go, scripture says not this person, not this man, but the word of Yah says you will be snatched away together. Only Yah can determine what is clean and what is unclean. Only Yah can determine what is set apart and what is unclean. Only Yah can determine what is food, what is edible, and what is not food. And we won't go through the entire list. You go read it for yourself. Uikra, the 23rd chapter, or Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. You read it, the 11th chapter, rather. 
Uikra, the 11th chapter, Leviticus, the 11th chapter, you go read it for yourself and gain an understanding of what Yah considers clean and unclean food. You do it. Most of you are, are living lawless lives. In other words, you're living a life without Torah and you're sinning. Most of you have no clue with respect to the definition of sin. What is sin? Scripture even gives us the definition of what sin is. And that is the transgression of Yah's Torah. That is 1 John, the third chapter, the fourth verse. The transgression of Yah's Torah. His instructions. His, his instructions define what sin is. His instructions uh, are light. In other words, his instructions shine, shine, shine light on the darkness of our lives. His instructions shine light on sin. Without that light, the light of his instructions to shine, to shine light on the dark places in our lives, to shine light on our sins, we are just groping around in darkness, lost and on a road to destruction. And so now you have an opportunity to repent. You have an opportunity to repent and that's favor. That's favor. This young, this day, Yah is giving you an opportunity to repent. To repent from what? Sin. What is sin? Transgression of his Torah. Turn from your wickedness. Turn from your darkness. Turn from your ignorance. Turn from your pagan ways. And turn back to the true light of his Torah and gain an understanding of what is right, what is wrong, what is light, what is darkness, what he considers acceptable behavior, what he considers unacceptable behavior. And so today, the same message resonates that Yahukanan, the immerser, spoke and that Yahusha himself spoke. Repent. The rain of Yahuwah is near.